Hi there! In this video, I'm going to share how to create this split screen layout with sticky and scrolling elements. Just a quick trivia, I'm one of the very first to implement this kind of layout on Squarespace. Years ago, I shared this as a plugin because before the launch of Squarespace 7.1 Fluid Engine, it entailed a lot of codes to make this possible. But today, with the new Fluid Engine, we're now able to easily create this layout just by maximizing the built-in features, including the pinning feature to help us create the sticky elements. And we now have the option to add any element anywhere on the section that includes videos, as well as gallery summary blocks and text blocks. Let's dive right in and build this out. In any regular page, we may add a section and we'll use this very first option to add a blank section. And for us to easily visualize where we place our elements, I recommend tapping the G button on your keyboard. This will make our grid visible. We may always tap it again if you wish to hide the grid. While this section is selected, you'll find this button to edit the section. And for this particular layout, I wish to remove these padding that's built in when we have the section fill screen toggled on. So I will toggle this off and I can just define the number of rows by clicking this button, the row icon, and dragging it downwards we'll need to drag it more as we add more elements. But for now, what I'll do to create a truly split screen layout, I will eliminate our gap and it can be just eliminating the horizontal gap such that when we add a shape block later on, it will fall exactly at the center of our screen. So I will drag this down to zero now we're ready to add our block. So I'll start by adding our image block. I pre-uploaded our assets. So all I need to do is select from the library and I'll scroll down to where my assets are. So I'll use this main image. And again, we may add any block. So I'm starting with images, but you can actually add any block. And then just to anchor our left screen, I will add a text and for this layout, I want this block to flush to the edges of the screen and hence I dragged it to the very left side and then I'll start typing our text and then I'll assign the proper heading format for this one. I'll assign heading two. And from here, we actually would like to add some space around this text. So what I'll do is click this tile background icon and I'll enable the background. By default, it will have a background color. But once I click any of these options, notice how I can drag this slider to the very left side such that the opacity of this color will be zero. And then from here, we can define the padding. So notice how I have this padding option. I'll use large because I want enough padding for the left and right. But for the top and bottom, I would actually want to decrease this. So we still have this granular option to decrease the top and bottom. Now you might be wondering why do I have to add the padding? I can simply reduce the width of the text block. The reason why is this will ensure that our text block occupies half of the screen or the section, no matter which device we're viewing the site on. From here, we can also center this text. And then what I prefer doing is finalizing the text, especially the content, before I manage the layout because with Fluid Engine, the layout seems to move when we change the length of the text. For text blocks, we may also define the vertical alignment. So by default, our texts are aligned vertically to the top, but for this particular text block, I want it to be vertically aligned to the center. So I'll use the center 
align icon and then I'll go ahead and add the other elements. So right at the middle, I want to add an image of our brand submark. So I've pre-uploaded this logo submark and notice how I can easily reference the center of the section by referring to this dotted blue line and I just would need to adjust the size of this submark and position it accordingly. Now to create this color block, all we need to do is add a shape block, but I won't add it at the moment because adding the shape block will not allow me to see the grid. So I will add that at the very last step. Now we may add other elements. So I will drag this row icon so I will have more space to add other images. What I'll do is I'll hit Command C on my keyboard and tap Command V to allow me to add more elements. And all we need to do is double click and replace this image with other images in our gallery. And because Fluid Engine is such a flexible drag and drop builder, we can actually overlap elements as needed if you wish. And again, it will just need a lot of dragging uh, to the bottom so we can increase the height of our section. We may add more elements in a while, but for now, let's look into how we'll make some of the elements sticky. So our goal is for these text block and image block to be sticky at a certain part of our screen while we scroll through the images. To do so, Squarespace has this pinning feature. And all we need to do is select the block, click the pin icon. Once we do so, we now have the option to define where to pin our blocks. If we use this default option, which is top, notice how our block pins at the top of the screen while we scroll through the images. But for this particular use case, I'd like this to be pinned to the center of the screen while I scroll through the images. Hence, I will use this pin to the center option. On the other hand, for this image, I actually want this to be pinned at the top of the screen. And so when I click this pin icon, I will use this top default option. And once I do so, even if I scroll through the images, it will stay pinned at the top. If you wish to have some offsets at the top, so it's not really at the very edge of the screen, we may define the offset. So I can assign like 32 pixels and notice how we have this breathing room at the top. Now for the scrolling part, you may add more elements. If you wish to have a description for the image, then just add a text block. You may also add auto-playing videos. Another element that I love adding are shape blocks. So if I search for shape, I can add the circular decor uh, on my demo site. And I wanna make sure I'm at the very top of the screen. So we will reference that. And I also want to make sure this is occupying half of the section width. And for this one, I want it to be a circle. I want it to be a perfect circle. So I will toggle off this stretch option and I will assign the background color to be transparent. So I'll choose any of these and again, drag it to the very left. Now I want to have a subtle stroke and I want the stroke to be really thin, so that will be one pixel. And for the color, I want this to be our lightest color in the color palette. It's not showing up just yet because we need to add another shape block. And that's what will define the color of this left section. Again, I am making sure it's occupying half of the width. And I also wanna make sure its height is more than 
the height of the screen. And so I'm dragging it down. It's okay if it's a bit beyond the height of the screen. And of course, in terms of stacking, we want it to be underneath our text block. And so while the shape block is selected, I will use this option to move backward. You may also use shift downwards as the keyboard shortcut. So I'll just press this multiple times until our other elements are visible. And we want these shape blocks to also be sticky or pinned at a certain part of our screen. For this circle, I want this to be pinned similarly as our text. And so I'll make sure it is pinned at the center. While for this color block, I want it, its top edge to be pinned at the top of the screen. And so I will again pin it and make sure the top option is selected. So now we're able to scroll through our images while the other elements remain sticky at the certain part of our screen. Now it seems like we need to add a bit more height to our shape block. We may track this bottom edge to increase its height. It could be that you'll have some problems with accessing the edges of our sticky or pinned elements. So what I recommend is to temporarily disable pinning and we can do that by selecting the element. And then right here, we can click this remove icon. This way we can easily manage the height of our shape block some more. So I'll select this and increase its height some more. And as soon as I hit save, I will select it again and enable the pinning feature. Now we don't have that much white space at the bottom. Now you might be wondering, how about the mobile view? The beauty of Fluid Engine is we can manage the placement and other properties of our elements independently on mobile. So once I click this mobile view, notice how it's not laid out properly at all because we do have the freedom to place our elements on mobile without affecting the desktop view. So what I'll do is I still would like to retain this color block and then I want to make sure it is underneath. So I will again move it backwards for this shape block. I think I just would like to create a decor out of it like this one. And from here, I want this to be at the center. And then I can add our images anywhere and it could be that we don't want them to be of the same size so yeah feel free to add them anywhere and then we may adjust the height of the section as needed so right here it seems like i have a lot of white space so i will drag our row icon up feel free to adjust the size as well as the placement of our elements on mobile view because um, these changes won't affect the desktop view. Now for the pinning feature, the pinning feature is also not carried over from the desktop. So if you wish to make any element sticky or pinned on mobile view specifically, then you may again toggle on this pin feature. Notice if I do that, it's pinned at the very top, but personally, I prefer not enabling the sticky feature in mobile because it um, further limits the limited real estate that we already have for mobile. So that's how easy it is to create this fixed split section or sticky scrolling section on Squarespace without any code. If you liked this tutorial, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also, please visit our creative components library via squarestylist.com shop where I share a growing collection of free and premium components. And if you wish 
to learn how to code in Squarespace and to become a sought-after web designer, please check out my course, Standout Squarespace.